Hello, welcome to this webinar on easy ways to enhance your GA drawing views in advanced deal. My name is Alec Giles, I'm a structures consultant at Greytech and I'm going to give you a whistle stop tour of three easy methods to enhance your views. The first one is 2D underlays. No doubt on every project you get some kind of 2D layout drawings from the architect or the client. These will show your grids, your building, uh, maybe some surrounding areas and so on. And it would be nice at the end of the project to give them a lay GA drawing of your finished model, but with their layout also superimposed so they can see how the two match up. This is how you do it. First of all, you get their 2D drawing and you insert it into your model as a block, not a reference file. Then you create your perfectly standard camera as you always would. But before you actually create your view from that camera, you must go and tick the default allow detailing of CAD entities inside camera drawings. With that default ticked you generate your view and that will now have that block included in the view superimposed. Any blocks or 2D elements within scope of the camera will be included. Inside the drawing itself you can manipulate the layers so you could possibly turn off layers with superfluous information on them and control what you're seeing. You don't necessarily want your 2D underlay in every single GA view, so when you're generating other views, you can turn that default off again. And it won't make any difference. Each view remembers whether that default was on or off when that particular view was created. So you can update as much as you like. It won't upset them no matter what status that default was in at that point. Let's see it in action. So here I have an architect's drawing I've been working from. It's got the grids drawn in there. It's got uh, the columns for the buildings drawn in. It's got some dimensions for the grids and it's got some of the surrounding landscape drawn on there. And I've used that drawing and I've created the finished model on there. So if I just go back to our finished model. And there we go. Now I'd like to show, when I do my drawings, I'd like to show that I've used that architect's layout um, just for cosmetic purposes and to reassure them that I've matched up for their layout. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert that drawing as a block into my model. So I prefer to use the classic insert command. I'll browse and find the 2D layout. Make sure I insert it at the right place. And there we go, we have the 2D layout showing on the model. That's fine. Now we've got two cameras I've already created in this model. One over here and one over here. I haven't created the drawings yet, so if I create the drawing as normal from that camera, have a quick look in Document Manager. And we can see, as expected, that there's none of that block, no 2D AutoCAD objects at all are included in that drawing, just the advanced steel model. But I wanted to include that 2D drawing. So what I need to do, I need to go to the management tools and go to drawing general, general, and make sure I tick this first option. Allow detailing of CAD entities inside camera drawings. Tick that, make sure you update defaults. I'll update inside of parts here as well to be sure and then I'll go and select the other camera and I will generate that one okay now I can go into that drawing. Can't do the second one. And there we go. You can see that I do have now all the 2D underlay included in my drawing view, which is really quite nice. I can do some little touching up. I might move that label down a bit. I don't really want to see the architect's dimensions, but I think it might be nice to show the architect his grid rather than my grid. So these are all on separate layers. Whatever layers used in the original block are still there, so I can freeze his dimension layer or turn off his dimension layer. 
I'm going to turn off my grid layer so I can leave his cyan grids so you can see that I'm lining up with his grids. So that looks very nice. Oh, I might just turn off the construction layer as well. Turn it off, make it current. And that looks much nicer. So there we go, we've got the finished drawing there. So I will save and close that. And should I ever need to update from Document Manager, I'll go back now to Management Tools. I don't want all my other GAs to have that 2D block in, so I'll turn that off. And I will update defaults. You can see it says it's updated them here. I'll do them inside Advanced here as well, so they're definitely updated. But I can still go back to Document Manager and tell it to update these views. Force update. There we are. So the first drawing still doesn't have the 2D underlay because we didn't have it in the first place. The second drawing does still include the 2D underlay. So it doesn't matter what the default is set to when you update, only each view stores within itself what the default was on, whether it should be including the 2D elements or not. So that's how you can do a nice 2D underlay. Okay, the next Thing we want to show you is how to make your GAs have color outlines rather than all one color. So obviously normally when we generate our views in advanced here all visible lines are the same color, blue in the UK build. But you might like to brighten things up and improve the clarity by making them all sorts of different colors and it's a very easy way to do that. First of all you create your camera view detail in the model as perfectly normal but before you generate your drawing you go and check the defaults and you find this one called use color by layer in arrangement drawings for visible lines. You tick that option and then you generate your drawing view and all the lines in that view will be matching the color of the objects in the model. You can adjust the colors if you want to inside the drawing if you need to improve the clarity. This time though, the status of the default will make a big difference when you update your drawing. If that's been turned off again, when you update your drawing in Document Manager, all of your GA views will go to back to one single colour. But if you go into the drawing itself and use the update detail command inside the drawing itself, it will preserve whether it's colour or monochrome at that point. But if you update your Document Manager, they will all change to suit whatever that default says at this point in time. Let's look at that in action. Okay, so we have a familiar looking model here. Many of you will see, know this model. And I'm just gonna create an ordinary camera quickly. So it's just 3D view. And I'll go to uh, create camera. Choose any style. Okay, now I'll generate that drawing. And if you have a look at the drawing, there we go, as normal, we have a single color, all the outlines are in blue. So that's okay, but maybe we're looking, or at the moment we're looking to make that more colorful. So I'm going to delete that drawing. And to make it more colorful, I'm going to go to defaults. I'm going to go to Drawing Presentation, Colors, and at the bottom of the list there we have this setting. Use color by layer in arrangement drawings for visible lines. I'll tick that, make sure I update my defaults. And then I can generate that camera. Have a look at the drawing. And there we go, we have a nice colourful drawing now, with all the original colours, same as our model colours.
but the colors are the same as our model so maybe they don't work so well on a light background the yellow is a bit faint remember the color on screen is usually printed black and white so it represents the thickness on paper but I can still change these colors if I want to all the original layers from the model are existing here now so I could go to the railings layer click on that to change the color and make that a different color okay now I've got my railings in a nice brown color so it's very easy to adjust that anyway to make it look better on the screen as well so it's as simple as that to get your general arrangements to have nice colorful outlines and the third requirement for today is how to do a shaded view in a GA so going one step further to having color outlines it might be really nice to have a completely shaded view to really help people visualize what they're getting and you can do this in advanced still while maintaining an intelligent advanced still view as follows so it's quite a bit more complicated this one uh, quite a lot of steps first of all you create your camera view as you normally would but you need to set a fixed scale for that view it's very important to know what scale it is then you generate the view and you open the drawing itself inside the drawing you have to go to model space and then you have to xref a model into that drawing using the normal xref tools you have to set your current UCS in the drawing to match the camera that was used to generate the view you're going to have to use the UCS at three points option for that then you go back to paper space and you create a rectangular viewport in paper space you need to double click inside the viewport and then you can change to view on UCS which will orientate the view inside the viewport to match the camera view you can set the scale on the status line to match the scale of the camera view and you change the start visual style to realistic inside the viewport and then you can lock the viewport to make sure none of that can be upset or changed by accident later on that's a toggle on the status line you can double click outside the viewport again and then you need to align the views using the move command to move the viewport to align with the camera view and finally you can change the border of the viewport to an unused layer like def points and turn that layer off when there's updates both the viewport and the advanced still detail will both update live together so they'll still be synchronized throughout any future updates let's have a look at that now we're going to have a look at having a fully shaded view on our drawings and the first step of doing that is to create a camera as normal and in this camera I've just got to do one thing I have to make sure I know it's got a fixed scale so I'm going to make sure I fix that to 1 to 20 scale apart from that there's nothing special about that camera these views will work better if your outlines are multicolors as well to match the shading so I will check that I've got the management tools my use by layer color in the drawings which I have so I'm fine on that I'll just make sure I've updated the defaults to keep that and I will generate that drawing view so now I can go to the drawing there we go we have our outline view with the colorful outlines but we wanted to have it fully shaded not just the outline and to do that we've got to mix up a bit of AutoCAD technology into the bundle so we're going to create viewports and to have a viewport you need something in model space you see we're currently in layout space or paper space so we're going to switch to model space which is currently empty and we have to add our model to that model space so we're going to go to tools uh, export import xref manager and we're going to attach our model there it is okay so I'll view that and see what I'm doing now in order to use that and to get that right in the view we need to have our UCS matching that camera but this is all a single object so I can't use any nodes or do UCS objects or anything like that so I'm going to have to do UCS by three points and use the end points on the camera to set that 
like so. Now I can go back to paper space. And in paper space, you always have a layout tab on the end of the ribbon. So I go onto that tab and I create a rectangular viewport, slightly larger than my view. So now I can see my models come through here, obviously not aligned. So to get that all sorted out, I double click inside the viewport. And to get it uh, rotated correctly, first of all, I can use the use view on UCS command from the UCS palette. That's good. I need to match the scale as well. So this is why I needed to know the scale of my camera view. Come down to the command line here, status line, and I choose my matching scale. I want that to be shaded. So I have the normal visual styles available up here, so I can choose realistic here. And that's looking really good. Now the last thing I need to do, I want to make sure no one can view or zoom or pan. It doesn't get uh, rotated or anything like that. So I unlock this viewport down the status line again. I click on the lock symbol there to lock that viewport. Now if I try and pan, it pans the whole drawing. So now I've got to come out of the viewport and we need to align the views because they're obviously not in line at the moment. So I use the ordinary AutoCAD move command. I have to select the viewport frame to do the move, except but then I can move the shaded view from a known point to the outline view, like so. And there it is, looking nice. I don't really want to see the camera in this view, so I can go to the home ribbon and I can turn off the camera layer. Now, because it's a reference, the camera is part of the reference, they've all got the reference name in front of them. So I'm looking for November 3 cameras, turn that off, like so. Also I don't really want to see this black frame for the viewport, so what I can do is I can select that frame, move it to a layer I'm not using, like def points, and then I can turn def points off as well, and that frame's gone. So we now have a nice shaded 3D view, we still have all the um, intelligence of the advanced steel drawing view so I still label things as I normally would quite happily but I have the nice shading as well so that's how you can create your fully shaded GA view in advanced steel it's a bit more complicated but it's not that difficult once you get the hang of it that completes today's quick tips. I hope you find them interesting. Thank you for your attention.